I'm going to put the standoffs that the standoffs between these two circuit boards came with the clock kit. This standoff came with the case click kit. So there should be one more standoff in the signal generator kit. And the front is secured by a threaded spacer, male thread. Hex head screws in the back. That's what it should look like. Screws there standoffs there. The encoder is a little messed up. I'll bring it down here a little bit. Straighten this out as best I can. Encoders supposed to be wired like this. Two pins on one side, three pins on the other. Looks like there's a jumper going across there. So just to be straight, I've marked this pin goes to the key. This pin and this pin go to ground. This pin goes to R. On the other side, we picked the ground up here via this, a jumper that is. And this side goes to S2. I guess I should have marked this. P. Four conductors, key, ground, S2, and R. The photograph of the rear switch shows a jumper from here, which is the center, center connector where on the side it has three connectors to this connector on the two-sided connector. This is probably 40 or 45 years old. And they still sell it. And while I'm talking about it, it's not worth the extra money to get the mirror. Pin the uh, wire in the lug. I've already put a piece of heat shrink tubing on. Using our little tool here, we'll just get all these things friendly. And get the heat shrink to go over that terminal. 
and I've already shrunk this piece. The problem here is going to be the jumper. So as far as it'll go because of this jumper I placed across. So that that piece of shrink is virtually worthless, but I didn't plan ahead. Don't shrink it with a soldering iron or a match. Get a heat gun. They're not that much money. I powered it up and there is a message there but it's all washed out. This potentiometer in the back, it's the only one back there, adjusts brightness. Well, it's a fine adjustment but you can do it right. Now, probably could do a little, I still see those I think I can live with that. Now before you attempt putting it in the case, take the uh, plastic off. I'll say it again, once it's in the case you can't get the plastic off. Well, it's going into, oh. So, it says the output is 10 megahertz. And I can change it in... by rotating it. So rotating, see I've got the cursor under there, rotating changes that digit. If I push it in, it's hard on the hands, if I push it in and rotate it, it's possible to move the cursor. Now the 10 megahertz turn on frequency can be reset to anything within the generator's range. There's 60 megs. And I'll get in close to numerals on the display once. Peak to peak is uh, 12 and a half volts. And frequency. Now this is this is not a very good frequency meter. Is sixty point three. There's a signal at eighty. Frequency meter bounces around, but it says essentially eighty. At a hundred and forty. Peak to peak is only point six volts. Now remember, this is a only a two hundred megahertz oscilloscope. Hundred kilohertz. The lowest frequency I can get is uh, 3600. If I go any lower, I get an error message. So, this looks like it's going to be a good kit. I have two 10 megahertz TCXO oscillators, and we can compare 
this frequency with the frequency of one of them. So if you've stuck around to the end here, uh, give me a thumbs up or subscribe. I could use some subscribers right now. Thank you.